we are live again and as you can see on the screen today's title will be faith faith is the victory that overcomes the world and our title today is faith first faith first and we are going to be looking at the chapter of uh, hebrews chapter 11 and i hope that you guys are ready you have your bibles ready to study and you know really deep deeply engage with god's word so here we are a chapter a day with God, and today we are in Hebrews in chapter number 11. So without any further ado, Hebrews chapter 11. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we open the book of Hebrews chapter 11, I pray that you may speak to us, uh, give us your wisdom, speak to us directly today, change and transform our lives, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, it's good to be alive. It's good to be live again. And uh, we continue to study God's word every day, every single day, because we realize and we acknowledge that we need God's word. I'll try to be quick today, but I cannot promise anything. If anything, what I can guarantee you is that you are going to be blessed. What I can promise you is that God is going to speak to you like he's never done before. And we know that God is always willing to speak. In fact, the book of Hebrews is about a God who speaks. For Hebrews chapter 1 says, For God in times past spoke in diverse manners, in different ways. But in these last days he has spoken to us through his son, Jesus. And so we see in the Bible, in the scriptures, particularly in the book of Hebrews, we see a God who speaks. You know, it goes deeper because this God who speaks, when he created Adam and Eve, always wanted to speak with Adam and Eve. And so every Sabbath, every now and then, God would come to visit Adam and Eve. And one day when God returned to see them, in the cool of the day, the Bible says, God came to speak to them as he normally and usually does. He could not speak to them because they were afraid and they were ashamed. And so they hid themselves and that communication was broken off. And so we read how Adam and Eve were chased or driven out of the Garden of Eden, breaking communication between heaven and earth. But not shortly after that, we read about Enoch, who is taken to heaven. But even when we continue until Exodus chapter 25, we read about a sanctuary being built, which is what the book of Hebrews really spends more time about. It talks about God's way of communication with humans, communication with sinful humans, and how he resolves that broken line and broken gap. So here we are, Hebrews chapter 11. We'll be quick, but the main lesson here is faith, as you see in the title itself. Faith. Faith is the victory that overcomes this world. So what does Hebrews 11 have to do with you and me? Well, it says, first of and foremost, it defines what faith is. Well, it says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, I usually say this sounds like a, an equation, like a formula, a scientific equation, but it need not be. It's simply the substance of things you hope for, the evidence of things you cannot see. We cannot see God. We haven't seen God, yet we believe him, right? Whom having not seen, ye believe and are filled with joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's a mystery, but we believe it because it's true. We have not seen heaven, but we believe that eternal life is promised to us. That's what faith is. Faith is when you see, not with your eyes, but with your mind. You believe that the one who promised is faithful. So when you think about faith, it's interesting. Faith is not faith in you or what you think you can accomplish. Faith is redirecting everything to someone else who is more faithful, whom you can trust no matter what. That's what faith is. Faith is about believing that God will do what he says he will do. And so you have that hope within you. Even though you have not seen, you have that evidence and confidence. When you go back to the previous chapter, it says, cast not away the confidence that you have in Jesus. Don't cast away that confidence. And confidence comes from two words, really. Confide. One word, really. To confide. To trust in. And so are you confident in God tonight are you confident that god will do what he says that he will do in your life are you confident do you have 
the faith. Faith is not complicated, it's simply trust. Verse 2 says, For by it the elders obtained a good report. It's by faith that the Old Testament Bible characters, New Testament Bible characters even, obtained a good report. It's not by their works that they did, it's actually by faith. Isn't that interesting? For those who are joining just now, this is a chapter a day with God, Hebrews chapter 11. We'll see how many verses we can cover today, but I do encourage you, wherever we stop, however we stop, continue reading Hebrews chapter 11. Verse number three says, Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. This is key when it comes to faith. The word of God is the foundation of faith, in fact, because we are told in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17, I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith, what, what, what Hebrews 11 is doing is defining and describing what faith is so that we are not confused. We have so many examples of what faith is. So we should be able to see from these stories and examples what faith is. Well, it says by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. This is really what's at, at the primary uh, uh, foundation of faith. Faith is when things that are invisible create what is visible. Faith is when things that are not seen create things that are seen. And really, faith is the only way we understand that God created. It's not by science, it's by faith. Because science cannot understand it. This is deeper than science. And then we move on to verse number four. By faith, now we start to give case studies and, and examples of faith. So it says that by faith, Abel offered and to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained a witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaks. So Abel had faith. The first, the first, uh, well, the first human born. How how did he have faith? How can we have the faith that he had, for example? So when you look at the life of Abel, in what sense did he have faith? Well, what did he have faith in? Well, go back to Genesis chapter 4. What did he do exactly? He gave a sacrifice. But this sacrifice, what was it about? Well, it was about Jesus, right? Because, because it says before chapter 4 of Genesis, in chapter 3 verse 15, that, that you know when God, after he had driven out Adam and Eve, or in fact, before he drove them out, he asked them to sacrifice because that's where the, their clothing would come from. They were, they were half naked with their fig leaves or the, the aprons that they had made for themselves. But God says, no, 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 I have a better solution. I have a better solution. Someone will have to die for you. Someone will have to die in your place. And so we read in Revelation of the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world, Jesus Christ. That lamb signified him. Anyways, Adam and Eve were covered in, in good clothing made of animal skin. And, and, and that is really what this is all about. Jesus Christ that we have to put on. There are many verses in the New Testament that says put on the man Jesus. Or put on Christ Jesus. Put on the whole armor of God. At any rate, there we see that Abel believed God's word. What did he believe exactly? He believed that although they had sinned, that Jesus will come to save them. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 makes it very clear that, that there will be enmity between the woman and the serpent, which is Satan. So there will be enmity between the two. And those who will come from the woman, will there will be a seed that will crush the seed of the serpent. It will crush it. So they believed that Jesus will come and crush sin. They believed, he believed, Abel believed that, that Jesus was enough for him. You know, he, he did exactly what God told him to do. As opposed to Cain, who did not do exactly as God told him to do. Now, they both claimed to be doing the same thing, giving sacrifices. They all brought sacrifices. But one did exactly as God told him. The other one did not do as God told him. So from this we see that faith means to do exactly as God told you, to believe that God would do exactly as he said he will do. Verse 5, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death 
and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Another person who, who had faith was Enoch. Now, it, in what sense did Enoch have faith? Again, Enoch believed in Jesus. You see how it keep, keeps pointing to Jesus? Now, you ask me, how do I know that Enoch believed in Jesus? Well, <laughs> Jude 14 tells us very clearly that Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about Jesus. He looked forward to Jesus. He looked toward Jesus because Jesus, as we saw previously in chapter 12, even though it's not really previously, Jesus is the author and finisher of all our faith. All our faith. He's the one who has made it possible for us to even have faith. And so do you have faith? Are you looking to Jesus? Is your life centered around Christ? Or is it centered around self? But Enoch, Enoch was translated. He had a testimony. He pleased God. And then he says here a very, very important point here in verse number six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Faith first is our topic and our discussion tonight. In your Christian experience, in your walk with God, do you have faith first or faith last? Well, faith has to be first because if you do not have faith, it is impossible to please God. But what, what they didn't say here is that sometimes you can not have faith and feel as though you're pleasing God. Well, it says even if you feel what's th what this is implying anyways, even if you feel like you're pleasing God, if you don't have faith, it doesn't please God. So think about the best that humans can do, morally or religiously speaking. That doesn't move God without faith. And the reason why nothing moves God without faith is because we are, we are unworthy. There's nothing we can do to elevate ourselves from the, from the depths of sin that we are sunk in. It's only through Christ and his redemption that we are saved. And so faith in him is a requirement for salvation because it's the only thing that will elevate us and upgrade us from our state of sinfulness. So look unto Jesus is the only option. God has given his son. Yes, in the last times he, he, he spoke through the prophets in different ways, in different symbols and types and this and that. But in these last days, he has spoken through his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ has been made above all things. We saw yesterday in Ephesians chapter 4 that God has a plan and a purpose to bring all things under Christ. So that according to Colossians chapter 1, 17 and 18, that really everything was made for Jesus, by Jesus, and for him, right? And that in him, all things should consist. So Jesus is so central to the Bible that you realize, you see. And, uh, and so that's why we have J.I.B. standing for Jesus in the Bible. Although you could say journey in the Bible, but we want it to be Jesus in the Bible. Okay, it is 15 minutes. I would really love to keep going, but I'll just leave it here. Continue reading Hebrews chapter 11. You will see different examples about other people who had faith and learn from those things. Learn from those principles. Apply them in your life and you will see a difference. But the message today is simple. Faith first. You need faith. If you don't have faith, whatever you're doing doesn't mean anything. Because faith without it. We cannot, we cannot please God. I feel like I should go a little more here. It speaks about Noah, how by faith he was moved with fear, prepared an ark, saving his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. You see, this righteousness we are all striving for, this perfection that we learned about yesterday, it's all by faith. Even yesterday, we clearly demonstrated that it is, in fact, by faith. By faith. The worthy walk that we, saw, that we saw yesterday only happens after the mercies of the living God. And when we receive the mercies of the living God, we are able to present our bodies, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. It's all by his mercies and his grace. Noah, 
In what sense did Noah have faith? He did exactly as God told him to do. He believed exactly what God told him that he will do. There's so many verses that we can go into right now, but this is my 15 minute cap for today. I wish I could continue, but by God's grace, keep studying Hebrews 11. Let me know what you find in Hebrews 11. I am going to create a space where we can continue to study together and, and, and interact as well. So, so join in the journey. Join in the journey because this journey, we cannot journey alone. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world.